hey guys welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sasha gay robinson and if you're new to my channel i talk about my journey from one country migrating from one country which is jamaica to where i'm living right now which is canada um on this channel we talk about my entire experience and what i have been doing step to step to get to the part that i'm at right now so everybody is a part of the migrating world and i wanted to make sure that i share my experience free of cost of course to help you guys if you're interested in migrating to canada as an international student or overall migrating even as a worker or trying to see if you can get your pr straight ahead then this channel is for you so if that's something that you're interested in, please continue to watch. Truly, I just really want the best for you. Only making sure the stage is set for you. So for today's video, I will be talking about, well, I will be showing you actually the step-by-step -step process of applying for your student permit slash your student visa, okay? So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, you go ahead and sign into your Canada.ca's account. I use a GC key. I've made a video before how to create one. So you just log in and click on the I accept. It, enter your security question, answer. Then they'll bring you to your account. After you've done that, then you just scroll all the way down to start a new application. And then you click on apply to come to Canada. Then it's going to ask you if you have any personal reference code to begin your application. I don't, so I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to click on the visitor's visa, student, and slash or work permit. As it says, if you don't have a personal reference code, you may answer a series of questions to find out if you're eligible to apply for it or not. So this is the beginning of the questioning. It asks in what would you like to do in Canada and seeing that we're doing the study permit study visa we click on study then the second question is how long we are going to click on temporary more than six months next question is select the code that matches the one that on your passport i'm from jamaica i'm just pretending as if i am not in canada so use a jamaican passport you just select which country you are in and what passport you have then what is your current country that you're living in i select jamaica but then again remember i'm in canada but i'm just doing it as if i am outside of canada do you have any family members who's a canadian citizen or permanent residency and is 18 years or older you select yes or no based on your situation then you enter your date of birth there out your date of birth you click on next on the right hand side then the next question is are you a lawful permanent resident of the united states with a valid u.s citizen or immigration services number i am not so i select no if you are go ahead and select yes then click on next then it's asking you have you been accepted oh sorry go ahead again all right so have you been accepted to a designated learning institution i spoke to you about what this is i've made a video specifically for this uh, when applying you have to make sure that the school is under the designated learning institution go watch that video if you have not but the next after you click next you're going to select what your marital status is if it's married single or whatever you just select it there then it's asking you where will you be staying most of the time while you're studying my choice is ontario because that's where the school was located then the results is here stating that based on information that i've provided the results below indicate whether um, you will be eligible to come to canada and it says you may be eligible to come to canada as a student and i would need to apply for the student permit you click on continue then it's going to ask you to create your personal checklist based on information that you have provided or you will be answering next. So you click on continue afterwards. It is also stating that you're not supposed to do more than one application. It's not going to speed up your process and you're just going to waste your money because they don't offer any refund. So just one application is necessary. So go ahead afterwards and click on continue. Then more questions. It says, do you have a valid work permit or study permit and need a visa to return to Canada? Answer is, for me at that time, it would be no. 
However, if you are in Canada and you have a study permit already that's expiring or a work permit, you select based on what you currently have. Next question asking if you're an exchange student. Answer should be no. If you are an exchange student, you should be applying with your school that is doing the exchange program or an agency. It asking also is um, work an essential component of your studies, basically asking if the program that you're studying will need you to do work experience for a semester in order to graduate. Mine was yes, so I selected yes. If yours is no, select no. And asking you if you're the spouse common law of the person basically that is applying, the answer is no. If you are, select yes. Then lastly, it's asking you if you're a recipient of the Commonwealth Scholarship all of those and then um my answer is no because i didn't get any of the above listed then you click on next next question is are you accompanying a family member that has a status in canada or has recently been approved to come to canada answer for me was no because i came alone but if you are say you are the person you're someone's husband and your wife has um gotten the acceptance to come to canada you can select yes to that but my answer would be no i forgot to answer one more question which says have you ever been committed or arrested for being charged for any criminal activity my answer is no if yours is yes go ahead and fill that out then next question is asking me if I did a medical exam by the IRCC authorized panel physician, a doctor within the last 12 months. My answer was yes. If you have not done it, then you can put no. They're asking me if I wanted to submit another application for a family member. You can do that. And they're saying that family member, you may be able to submit an application from family member who wants to come to Canada or extend their stay if they're in Canada. So if you're traveling with your husband or wife or any children, you can click yes. But for me, as I mentioned, I would have been coming by myself. So my answer is no. Then they're asking me if I'm giving anybody access to my application, like an agency or anybody else to represent me. If you are, then click yes to which one um, is for you but my answer would have been no because I'm the only one doing my application lastly they're asking me this question to say if I've given my biometrics which is a fingerprint within the last 10 years to come to Canada the answer would have been yes for me because I came to Canada before as an exchange student but this time it wouldn't be as an exchange student it would be just as a normal student so I selected yes but if you have not then select no Last question now is saying, well, last few questions is asking me if I will be able to pay for the fee. And you click on yes. Then it says, are you able to make a digital copy of your documents with a scanner or a camera? Of course, you can use your phone. So you select yes. Or if you're scanning it, just select yes to that question because they're going to need your documents anyway. Then they're asking you if you'll be able to pay your fee that they will be charging online. And they showed you all the cards that they accept. You click yes. And then click on next. Then this is a time now that they give you to review all the questions that and the answers that you have provided. You can go ahead and go down. Make sure that everything is correct. And if you want to make any edits, there is the pencil right there. You can click on to make any edits if you made any mistake or you want to change anything. Then you go to the bottom and click on continue. Then they gave you a summary of the steps that you're going to need in order to submit your application. So step one, step two, and step three, and also step four. Then you click on continue. The next page is now your document checklist. The first thing that they're going to ask for is application for study permit made outside of Canada, the IMM1294. You have to download that application, then fill it out. But I'm going to make a separate video for that one because it takes a little bit of time. So look out for that video. Then you have your supporting document. So they want the evidence of the work that, that where basically they're asking you, um, why do you need a work permit too? Because you're going to get a study work study permit plus a work permit so your educational institution have to show that you need to work in Canada and provide you that information the second one now is a letter of acceptance 
that is going to be sent to you from your institution. You should provide a letter of acceptance and upload it there. I would suggest just uploading the entire um, acceptance document that they sent to you via email, or if they sent it via mail, just upload every single thing that they sent. Third thing on the list is the passport. It says you must submit a, a legible copy of your valid travel document, which you will be using to travel. If you have a passport, you must provide a copy of the page that shows your birth date and country of origin and any page with stamps, visa, or markings. If you do not have a passport, then you should use something else, any other travel document. Then the next one is proof of means of financial support. This one, it says, if you're visiting Canada, you must provide proof that you can support yourself and family members who will be living with you in Canada. So basically, like your bank statement for the last four months, a bank draft, pay stubs, employment letter, proof of assets or business, everything that's listed there. Take a screenshot, guys. And you can also put sponsorship letters and their bank statement. Remember, I did a video. with. If you haven't watched that video yet, persons can actually sponsor you. Um to pay for your living in Canada or even your tuition. So you can add it there also. Next, we have the digital photo. They are very specific when they explain the type of photo that they want. So again, take a screenshot of this, explaining how it should look and the size, etc. I know we're talking about student visa, but it also works for the express entry and any other temporary applications that you might fill out. The next one is the proof of upfront medical. I selected yes before, remember, so that's the reason why they're asking me for the medical. If you select no, then this wouldn't be needed. But just in case you have selected yes, if you have gotten a medical, this is what they're saying. Then lastly, well, second to last, it's family information. This is a form that needs to be filled out. When you click on it, it's saying that you must complete the family information form. Basically, you're going to list everybody that you're related to. I'm going to make another video um, after this one showing you how to fill out that information. Then you scroll down to the optional documents. You have first application for a temporary resident visa meets outside of Canada. This is another application that you have to download and fill out. I will be making a separate video showing you guys how to fill out this also. So in total, we have three. And lastly, it's a client information. This is where you would put the letter of explanation for the student visa application so you can put it there or any other document you think that would help with your application you can put it in the client information i'm just showing you the amount that it would cost to do the application itself right now it's showing 150 but i should let you guys know that the study permit is 150 but if you have to do the biometrics it's another 85 dollars so 150 plus 85 dollars is the normal price which comes up to like 235 there about however because i've done the biometrics before that's the reason i don't need to do it again i am trying to download the application to show you guys how it would look but it was giving me a warm time so as i mentioned i will be making another video to show you how to fill out all the applications that I um, that we would need in the student permit. So this is the first one, I'm just saving it to the desktop, then I'm going to open it afterwards to meet the next video. So look out for that video for that application. Then I'm downloading the family information. This is how it looks. I'm making a separate video showing you guys how to fill it out but it's pretty straightforward to be honest that video is going to be like maybe five minutes or less so you're going to select um student at the top and then just fill out all the information that they are asking for but basically this is an overview of what they are going to require very quick and easy and then you upload that document you click on save at the top and then upload a document to the application
but let's go back to the application itself so after you've done all the applications this is the last one i'm just saving it to my desktop again again i will do a in-depth video of how to fill out this specific application so three applications i will be making separate videos for the family and the two um, other application the temporary visa one and the student one that is needed so look out for those videos you save them and then you fill them out so basically in summary you go to your application checklist you upload the documents that they require and then after you're done you're going to have a button that says continue or next you're going to click on that and make the payment and you're all set as i mentioned before if you do need to do the fingerprint if you have never done it before and this is your first application you're going to be charged 85 dollars extra plus the 150 for the student permit so the student permit is 150 and the biometrics which is the fingerprint is the 85 dollars and that's it that's basically it so i hope this information helped you guys and just follow the steps that i just did a while ago if you have any questions at all please feel to leave them down below like i do respond to every single comment so if you have any questions regarding it and as i mentioned i am not an immigration lawyer i don't work for the government this is basically what i have done to come here so i hope this information helped let me know if you have any questions if you do leave it below until next time god bless you guys and i'll see you guys in my next video bye